This video was sponsored by Brilliant. You might remember Pascal's triangle. Starting with an infinite row of zeros and a single one, new rows of numbers are constructed by adding the two numbers above it. Pascal's triangle is the set of non-zero numbers. We saw Pascal's triangle before in the video about counting how many gifts were given over the 12 days of Christmas. In this video, I want to show you many fascinating facts about Pascal's triangle, including connections to the numbers pi and e. Although Pascal wrote about his triangle as early as 1653, the triangle was called the staircase of Mount Meru over 1,000 years ago on the Indian subcontinent. Around the same time, the Persian thinker Omar Khayyam studied it, so today in Iran it is called the Khayyam Triangle. And in the 13th century it was studied by Yang Hui, so it is still called Yang Hui's Triangle in China. Even in Europe, Pascal was scooped. For example, the triangle appeared in the writings of the mathematician Tartaglia, so it is called Tartaglia's Triangle in Italy today. Let's start with three facts that you may have seen. One of the most well-known patterns in Pascal's triangle is that if you add up the numbers in each row, you get the powers of two. A similar trick is that if you read the numbers from left to right, you get powers of 11. This pattern continues to work after two digit numbers show up if we take the excess digits and carry them to the preceding digits. For the third fact, imagine a circle with n points on it and lines connecting each pair of points. If you find row n in Pascal's triangle, the second number corresponds to the number of points on the circle, the third number corresponds to the number of segments, the fourth number corresponds to the number of triangles, the fifth number corresponds to the number of quadrilaterals, and so on until you reach the maximum number of sides. So what do all of these three facts have in common? They're all related to how the rows of Pascal's triangle are generated. One way to do this is to use the binomial theorem, which tells us how to algebraically expand x plus y to the power n. You see that the coefficients, usually called binomial coefficients, are numbers from Pascal's triangle. We denote the coefficient for the mth term as n choose m because it represents the number of ways of picking m objects from a group of n. The numbers in the nth row of Pascal's triangle is just the set of coefficients in the expansion of x plus y to the n. Now if we substitute 1 for both x and y, this shows that 2 to the n equals the sum of these terms, exactly the terms in the nth row of Pascal's triangle. Setting x equals 10 and y equals 1 gives us powers of 11, which explains the second fact we mentioned earlier. The last fact arises by selecting m points from n possible points on the circle and joining them, which is why it connects to the number n choose m, the mth term, in the nth row of Pascal's triangle. Although the binomial coefficients create a lot of cool patterns in Pascal's triangle, there are still more patterns to explore. First, there's the hexagon or flower petal pattern. Pick a number, not on the boundary of Pascal's triangle, and look at the hexagon of numbers surrounding it. There are two groups of alternating numbers in this hexagon. If you multiply the three numbers in each group, you will find their product is the same. This observation follows from this identity. The famous Sierpinski gasket is also hiding in Pascal's triangle. If we color in only the odd terms, we see Sierpinski's gasket as we zoom out. A lot of strange numbers and sequences show up in the triangle. If we left justify the triangle and sum these diagonals, the Fibonacci numbers show up. It's captured in this formula. The mathematical constants pi and e also make appearances in Pascal's triangle. To see pi, we look at the reciprocals of elements of the triangle. If you alternate adding and subtracting pairs of elements of the third diagonal, you get pi minus 2. How does this work? First write out each term explicitly, then express each fraction as the difference of two other fractions. You'll see that many of the terms cancel out, leaving this expression. The part in brackets is the so-called Leibniz formula for pi over 4, so our original sum is pi minus 2. To find e in Pascal's triangle, 
we look at the product of the numbers in each row, denoted by P sub n. Looking at the nth row, multiply the row products of the two neighboring rows together, then divide this by the square of the current row product. Remarkably, this expression simplifies to 1 plus 1 over n all to the n. It is well known from calculus that this approaches e as n approaches infinity. Let's look at one more amazing formula with binomial coefficients. We can think about this formula as taking the elements in one row of Pascal's triangle, squaring each of them, and then adding them up. The sum is exactly this element further down in the triangle. Another way to think of this formula is to count the number of n-person committees that can be formed from n men and n women. There are lots of other cool patterns in Pascal's triangle. Do you know some more? Share one in the comment section. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. An excited NASA scientist wrote to me recently, not only does he love Tipping Point Math's content, like the paper size video, but he raved about Brilliant. He likes the approach they take to teaching, giving quizzes to check understanding, and design courses so subsequent material builds on the previous material. He especially liked the content on how toilets and refrigerators work. To learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash tippingpointmath and sign up for free. And as a bonus to Tipping Point Math viewers, the first 200 people to go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription.